session. Is there a motion to come out of executive session and seal the minutes? Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to come out of executive session under round general law 42-46-5, subsection A2, uh, session pertaining to collective buying and limit, uh, litigation or work sessions pertaining to the same Iron Mine Hill Road tax stabilization agreement. Uh, please let the record show that no votes were taken to seal the minutes. Uh, this will be continued until on August 5th. It's a motion. Motion by Mrs. Wentz. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Bagnoli. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Bagnoli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. O'Shea? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Bagnoli? Yes. Um, if the rest of the council would indulge me, this time we'll go back to the presentation of citations for the State History Day winners, Mrs. O'Hara. Um, thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Um, this has been long overdue, but our students that were to come were so busy at school, um, at work, it was hard to get at least two or three of them in here. Um, first of all, I'd like to commend the school and their program for History Day. I think you all can hear me, it's my recess voice. Um, they did outstanding. They had two groups, one, which is the love of my life, they did a play. And uh, they got national uh, recognition, they won, and I believe, if I'm right, Michael, correct me if I'm not, and Tim, uh, they went to Washington. And, um, um, Michael or Tim, could you get up in the essence of the way because they say we did not, we're not into government. I know Michael started government in my class and I always told him he'd be the first governor and I'd run his campaign. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if that exists once he comes back to school, he's leaving school soon to go to Spain to, Spain to study. And then his a little brother, Timothy, actually they're twins, um, was in another class, but we made sure he got within the swing of things. And then we have Sarah, which we don't know exactly what's going on right now, but we sure do follow her brother's footsteps. Uh, Michael, could you just give the essence of the uh, theme of the play that you want on, please, and wrote? Pretend you're yelling at your brother, we'll get a lot of volume. Okay, so basically the play was, um play about uh, Martin Luther you all hear this? King about uh, Martin Luther King's assassination and then the uh, social um, impact and the social reaction by it. So we each so it was a monologue type play, so each of us had a specific character that we had to draft out and then after we drafted them out we basically memorized our own speech, um, kind of put it together, performed it, and then at the end of the play we would introduce who we are and how uh, Martin Luther King's, uh, you know, legacy impacted us like today. So obviously, for me and Tim, we're biracial, so you know, but, um, we uh, talked about the Loving Me Virginia, the court case that legalized uh, uh, interracial marriage, and then maybe uh, some as one of the other guys talked about um, how their parents you know, grew up in a uh, very diverse society and they were raised to be very accepting of other races and all that. So my character, uh, William Grafton, just made up uh, from Morehouse College an alumni, uh, um, just talked about the, uh, the Birmingham letter and the riots, and then we had another character, uh, Reggie Miles, who was uh, played by LJ. Maybe you know LJ's on the football team, very um, to the school, sports and uh, school community. He uh, talked about the riots in uh, Sacramento and how he joined the Black Panthers. And so uh, we won uh, Superior, and we won first place at the state level. And then we uh, went on to go to Nationals in uh, D.C., uh, uh, where we, uh, we, uh, we didn't get too far. Mm -hmm. We on the first day of the one of the two days, which is uh, we just being there for us as an accomplishment. It was very hard to get there. So. Uh, well, when I start, needless to say, it's on my refrigerator with many other things. we at, at this point, we don't even know what you put in it anymore. Uh, we have only two, many have left. One young man lives out of state. He is going back home. Um, so believe me, it was all legal. Mm -hmm. yeah, the other yeah. <laughs> You don't know today, I want to make that clear. And um, 
some people will have left for, for vacation, so we've been trying to get at least two uh, here to recognize the importance of the theme that they put forth and uh, the excellent, the quality of their work, which is important. Um, this is Michael. He's the quiet one, not. Mm -hmm. uh, Timothy, could you please come up? I think these are the only two in this group. Um, it is with pride that uh, I present, and I'll give you the others to give to them, please. Okay. This is Michael Duffy, and uh, Michael, uh, this town is proud uh, on the work you put into it and the fact you did win. And this is well, this one's going to be, maybe this one could be president. I'm thinking of what's going on right now. So this is Timothy Duffy. I'm very proud. The others that, that were involved in that group, and I'll give you these, give them, was Matthew, he too, uh, Jared Duby, and Jason Merriweather II, am I correct? That was the ones in your group. Um, there were two girls in another group. Yeah. Um, I will get to them. Their theme was more based on it. Theirs was the Equal Rights Amendment, and it's, pa it's a continuous um, attempted passage. So they did a timeline of the Equal Rights Amendment and how they're, how they're it's been like continually trying to pass and ratify into the Constitution. And do um, you see Liz and Emmett all during the summer? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the two girls, again, uh, was Liz Gillette and Emma Grant. And uh, these two ladies worked hard together. The, the, the graphics and, and all were, trust me, excellent. And I'm very, very proud of both of them. So uh, at, you're leaving in August. Yeah. And I'm sure I'll see you at a party. And, and his brother will be going to, I believe, URI, right? am I right? And he won't be too far. The yeah. home. <laughs> it's what can I say? We have so many students that we're so proud of, and uh, I will continue yeah. to look closely. And then next, I'm sure we'll get Sarah up here mm -hmm. if we have anything to say about it. <laughs> Timothy, Ms. O'Hara is not kidding, if, but you both can't run for president at the same time. Well, president vice. All right, but you know, the longest journey stops at the first step. When, you, when you're done with college, please come back to your community. Take that first step, run for town council. You guys are very articulate and you have a lot to offer. I'm, I'm, I'm proud. Thank you so much for what you've done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Hara. <laughs> Next item, North Smithfield Town Council sitting as a Board of License Commissioner. The Pines Events and Promotions LLC doing business as the Pines. We have three items, the liquor license, the victory license, and the entertainment license. President, uh, members of the Town Council, uh, I am John Gallagher, an attorney with offices located at 2088 Broad Street in Cranston, Rhode Island. Uh, it, is, it is my pleasure to introduce to this council and to the town, Rosa Zang. Uh, Rosa is here. She is the, uh, the, the sole member of the entity which has an agreement uh, to purchase the Pines Restaurant. She would be purchasing it and, and operating it. Rosa is, is a joy, frankly, and many of you will get to know her, I hope, and you will see that she is dynamic. She has a wide range of international business experience, and uh, she has chosen with all her travels, to, um, she has a, a, a master's in business administration from the University of Leicester in the United Kingdom. She has had business experience in Japan and New Guinea and around the world. She travels extensively, and she has chosen 
her next venture to be on Pound Hill Road in North Smithfield. It is exciting, I think, for her, and it's exciting for the town. Uh, I know, because my assistant lives in North Smithfield, that the, the Pines has been an institution in the town for a long time, uh, where you had many events, birthday parties, and the like, and that, uh, you know, unfortunately, several months ago, it closed after a change of ownership. Rosa has looked, I have helped her, looked at different opportunities around Northern Rhode Island. She lives in Newton, Massachusetts, and hopefully maybe she'll move to North Smithfield. Uh, uh, but she's had many opportunities, is a very careful person, has been very diligent in looking for opportunities. She saw the Pines as an opportunity, and quite frankly, it really is. And it's the type of thing that she does, the type of thing that she wants to do. She is also a hiking leader for the Appalachian Mountain Club. So if anyone's interested in joining her at any hikes, she's going to do that. But she's, she is, quite frankly, a leader, and she looks forward to bringing the Pines back to life. Um, she, I think, believes that uh, the way it has operated in the past is the way that she wants to operate it in the future. It has many opportunities. It has the pub. It has the restaurant. It has the banquet facility. And I think she's going to continue that. I think her, she's had many uh, business opportunities, and I think what she'd like to do is kind of bring business groups up there to have their meetings and to, to uh, uh, do that with the restaurant and the banquet facilities as well. Um, and I think she will be terrific in doing that. I talked to her a little bit about liquor licenses, and I told her that you have to check IDs, check IDs, and check IDs. <laughs> She got that message. As a matter of fact, last month she took a bartending course and a tips course to become familiar with the operations. So she has a tips certification now. She is going to hire uh, a management staff. Uh, her, her informal board of directors, John Goh, who's over here, has operated uh, businesses in uh, uh, of the area in, in Massachusetts um, uh, for 20 years. He's had three different restaurants. So she's drawing on the experience of others in order to go into the restaurant business. So she looks forward to, to doing that and to bringing it, as I said, back to life. Um, she understands the responsibilities with respect to liquor um, and, uh, and those types of things. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them, or Rosa will as well. Um, uh, her first language is Mandarin, but she has, understands English very well. Um, and and I'll, I'll ask this question. I think uh, generally it's, it's going to be an American food restaurant with some Asian specialties, but not a Asian restaurant. That may be a question that people have because of her heritage, her Asian heritage. Uh, but I think that it's going to be American food with, with other types of foods as, as, as the community wants. And she has said to me that you know she really wants it to be a community area. And as I indicated to her, it has been a place where uh, where the community has gathered for events. And I think she wants to continue that tradition. Um, so that's that's her intention is to kind of continue it to expand the banquet business to the extent she can. I, I think it's a terrific location. I think it would be a shame if that had been shut down. And I, I, it's it's very unique rural area, beautiful setting, Pines really says it all when you go up there, um, and kind of uh, in, in a residential area, but hidden a little bit so as not to be uh, disruptive to the neighbors. And she's very much aware um, that she'd be responsible and responsive to neighbors with respect to any issues that arise with respect to that. Um, Rosa, do you have anything you want to add? If you have any questions, you'd be happy to answer them. I do. I do. Welcome, Rosa. I, I, I wish you a lot of success. The, the things I'm about to say, don't worry. Was that, was that, mo uh, was that moment time? I honestly, don't worry in Mandarin. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, boy. It probably wasn't even Cantonese. Who knows? Um, Japanese. <laughs> Well, not to worry. I just want to make sure that all our I's are dotted on T's across. Uh, tips, 
that's required, as you know. Surf Safe is another one that you and your staff, uh, whoever the manager is on time, has to be. Uh, I'm looking at our check sheet here. The fire marshal is probably the most difficult hurdle with, with suppression and ingress and all that stuff. Uh, building inspector and tax collector's office. I think tax collectors might come a little bit more in when the liquor license is really come in front of you. Attorney, correct me if I'm wrong. I just want to make this go as smoothly as possible. Certainly, all the, all the, with respect to tax clearances, all of the prior tax clearances have to be satisfied before the liquor can be transferred. Yeah. And certainly that's a requirement of the transfer and, yeah. and both the town taxes and um, state taxes. Okay, so there, 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 okay. There, there are more signatures. The yeah. clerk does have more oh, signatures. Have okay. uh, under her paperwork. This, this was in order to get in the packet. Okay. She has other signatures on it. I have the building inspector's uh, signature. That one's checked. Okay. Um, tax, tax assessment. And, and, and tax collector, I know it's going to be an issue that will, it's, it's part of our discussion. Yeah. It will be part of our discussion. So, so let, let me just add to the tax situation. At this point, the sale has not occurred. It's contingent upon the, this transfer or on this, a new license, actually. Right. But it's contingent upon this uh, license. Uh, but certainly the taxes that anything are due would be paid at the time of the closing. She is purchasing the land, not just the business, but the property. I just want to make sure that the, like, everything, uh, the land and the building, it's all wonderful, but without the ability to serve. That's why we're here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we'll address it as we go through that. Mm -hmm. I also have a question, and I think it's the town planner that may need to answer this for me. There. Okay, so I live on the other side of the pond, across from the pond. The pond is town owned? Yes. They carry for it, I don't have a plan. <laughs> we received a notice uh, okay. as a result of this application, um, and it uh, reminded me that yes, it is. Okay. Okay, only because there was a question from the Pelequin family quite a few years ago. And so I just want to know that the pond is town owned. It is. Okay, thank you. I live on the other side. Sorry, I'm on the other side. Uh, but previously there had been, and I'm sure you won't, but there previously there had been some. Uh, Concerns about the speakers out in the parking lot broadcasting loudly, and it was disturbing you. But I know that's not going to be a problem with you, but I just felt I had to mention it. Thank you. Uh, I, did, I was not aware that the speakers outside. Did, yeah. But yeah, I was, I've been around for a long time. I think I remember <laughs> all these things coming up. So I, I think following up on that, um, you have an operational until 1 a.m., but as far as outside entertainment, what time? Will that end? That's a good question. At 10 p.m., whatever the whatever the town would, would prefer, it's 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 a reason, certainly a reasonable hour if you want to put conditions. On. No, I've enjoyed the wedding, so I just didn't know the time. That, <laughs> I can hear it. I just didn't know what time that it wouldn't continue to the 1 a.m. Would not continue to the 1 a.m. Okay. So do we want it? Do we want it? Is there a motion to approve the entertainment license for the so fines we, invention for motions LLC doing business as the fines? Is there a motion to approve that? So the entertainment license? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion for discussion. Okay. Mrs. O'Hara made the motion. Second. Second, Second discussion. Mrs. Is the last discussion. Yeah, contingent upon tax assessors uh, sign off and also with uh, Council of Parvoli Board of the 10, 10 p.m. outside. Uh, so uh, hours of operation, they, they, it's not addressed in here that it would uh, terminate at 10 p.m. Outdoors. Outdoors, yeah. And I think that's more than fair because the mosquitoes will pick you up and take you away anyway. No objection. So there's a motion to approve entertainment license in a second, pending sign up by the tax collector's office in a 10 in a 10 p.m. outdoor sound permit. Yes. Or, or sound uh, yes. entertainment. 
Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call. Well, one, one second, Mr. President. Okay. If for some reason this does not transpire, we might want to have a sunset clause because it is a liquor license. Am I? Uh, well, this, this, is is the this is the end of the end of the end I just want to make sure. Yeah, we have three, three licenses. Three licenses. Three. This is just the entertainment license right now. Okay, yeah. good. Entertainment, uh, big two ways for the DV. Okay. Yep, thank you. Stand right here. Call the table. Go call the Yes. Mrs. O'Hara. Yes. Mr. Ocean. Yes. Mr. Zelensky. Yes. Mr. Benet. Yes. Exit the DV liquor license. Is there a motion to approve the DV liquor license? Into the fines, events, and promotions LLC doing business as the fines. So moved. Motion by Mrs. O'Hara. Is there a second? Second, second uh, discussion. Zelensky for discussion. Second with the stipulations on, uh, as presented on the entertainment license. Hours of operation and noise. Just outdoor, outdoor only till 10. 10. Yeah, I guess so. They cover it until 1, but only outdoors till 10. Correct. And still signified by the tax collector signing. Yes, absolutely. The same stipulations we put on the first, the entertainment. If I may, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Right now, this is, it hasn't been paid because you can't, or you can't. They're waiting for you to, to, to sign up a sales agreement and then they'll pay the back tax. You're talking about the back taxes? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I assume that at the closing, the line item will go directly for those back taxes. We're not going to take title with those back taxes. Right. So that's, that's, that's the issue that's out there. Yeah. And so it, every, everything is pending that that one thing. Those payments being made, and then but the clerk is aware of that. So we'll Just a little redundancy on my part. Yep. I'm going to make the same yep. discussion. Yep. That's fine. So there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? There is none. We'll call vote. Mrs. Bonamoli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ocean? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Bandit? Yes. 